Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Historic St. Paul's Episcopal Church on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Um, welcome to those of you who are in the building and to those who are joining us live on Facebook and YouTube on this glorious spring morning full of pollen. <laughs> Oi. A uh, few quick announcements. Um, the four day-by-days for May, June, and July have arrived in both handy pocket size and large print. So those are available in both narthexes. Fancy church word for lobby. <laughs> um, next Saturday is the diocesan revival, Fearless Faith, up in Roseville, at St. John's Roseville. Um, there's some postcards you can pick up, QR codes to scan, all that good stuff. Um, there'll be workshops um, from one, between 1 and 5, and then a revival worship service at, at, starting at 6. All are welcome. They encourage people to register, but it's not actually 100% required because they put out hundreds of these postcards throughout the neighborhood in Roseville in particular, so who knows who, who might show up. Um, but it'll help them prepare the worship space. For those of you who might be organ fans, um, the American Guild of Organists Sacramento Valley chapter is presenting their Bachathon concert, organ music by Johann Sebastian Bach and friends, today at 2.30 at St. John's Lutheran. Um, fabulous organ there, and I know a number of the people who are, it's, it's you don't have to attend the entire thing, um, it's designed to sort of pop in and out of, because it's multiple organists coming in and playing their favorite Bach piece, our friends of Bach, so um, I'll be there for the whole thing, because I, Bach is my favorite composer, <laughs> so, um, so I'd invite you to do that, it's, um, donations that go to their scholarship fund. So that's what's going on today. And with that, I think that's all I have for this morning. So at this time, I'd invite you to center your hearts into a place of prayer as we get ready to worship God in the beauty of holiness, the beauty that surrounds us in this building and the flowers of nature and in Facebook and Live and YouTube that allow people to join us remotely. And to assist us with centering our hearts, Justin will have the prelude followed by the opening hymn.
I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 249. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and wordly magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, it has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please be seated. Well, have you all figured out that on the fourth Sunday of Easter, it is always Good Shepherd Sunday? Have we heard that yet today? <laughs> Good Shepherd Sunday. And we always get the 23rd Psalm. And this year, we get the second half of Jesus telling us about God's nature, that God is the Good Shepherd. It's kind of crazy because this little reading is taken sort of out of context. We do that a lot, but this one's really crazy. So perhaps it might help to put this dangling gospel reading, sort of like a dangling participle, into a bit of context. This teaching is used to explain a sign, a healing earlier in John. Just before Jesus' discourse on the Good Shepherd, and we just get the middle piece of it today, Jesus healed the man born blind. The man born blind did not see Jesus. He was blind. But he did know the voice. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. Earlier, Jesus started the discourse by saying that the sheep know the shepherd's voice and they respond to it. Jesus tells us that he is the true Messiah the door to the sheepfold, and that others who came before him were just thieves and robbers, that through Jesus we will have abundant life. This part of John's dialogue, Jesus tells us about the nature of God. He uses one of the I am statements. I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. The Gospel of John uses I am statements to let us know about the nature of God. The people of Jesus' time and of John's time would understand the literary allusion to the phrase I am. We might not always get it. John is referring back to Moses and the burning bush. When God calls Moses and commissions him to go to Pharaoh to free the people of God, Moses asks God, what is your name? After all, Moses knows the names of the gods of Egypt, Atum, Shu, Tefnut, Gev, Nut, Osiris, Isis, Seth, and Nephthys. God tells Moses in response to that that his name is I Am. I am the God of Israel. When John uses I am, the good shepherd, people would hear God is the good shepherd. John uses seven descriptors, seven I am's, to tell us something about the nature of God. I think you've heard them all. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door for the sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the true vine. 
all natures of God. So today, Good, Good Shepherd Sunday, God's nature, we hear about God's nature as the Good Shepherd. And I'm guessing here that most of us have not had much exposure to sheep and shepherds, except maybe somebody who grew up on a farm. Just saying. And most of what I know of shepherds comes from reading about them and hearing from others. But how shepherds actually act is not as important as how God, the good shepherd, acts. Like Jesus' other agrarian explanations, this one is probably over the top. You know, like scattering seed no matter where it lands. No farmer does that. Jesus tells us that the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And indeed, that this shepherd Jesus loves the sheep so much that he does indeed lay down his life to show that love will not be dying. As I wrote in the E! News, the line that really stands out to me this year in the reading is, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. Jesus is, once again, expanding the reign of God beyond those who are present. He's expanding it beyond the people of Israel. He's not saying that the Hebrew people are not part of the flock, but that God is bigger than one people. God is bigger than people can imagine. And God's love is so big that it desires nothing more than to show us that love. That is why, perhaps, I go just a little bit crazy about some churches saying that they are the one true church and that they alone have the secret handshake to get into heaven. <coughs> that they alone are the chosen ones. Because Jesus tells us that his flock is bigger than that. That Jesus will go and find all of God's beloved children and offer them love and forgiveness. This is the story of Easter. God has many sheep who are loved. And God's love is so big that it cannot be contained to one people. It cannot even be contained by death. That love will break free of the bonds of death and keep offering us that love. There is nothing that we can do that will kill that love. Yes, we can do incredibly dumb things that will make that love weep but it will keep coming to us and offering forgiveness and love. Keep offering us that opportunity to say yes to God's dream. A dream where we stop doing destructive things, say we are truly sorry, and turn back to the love that created us. Which brings me back to putting this little snippet from John into context. It doesn't end with the Good Shepherd analogies. The story of the man born blind, who was drawn to Jesus' voice and healed, does not end with this part of the gospel. Shortly after this, we hear that the man born blind, I wish they'd just give him a name, that the man born blind is kicked out of the community for insisting that this Jesus healed him, and that because healing comes from God, then Jesus must come from God. As soon as Jesus finds out that he has been kicked out, he seeks him out to let the man know that there, he is part of a larger community, the community of God, the community of love. Jesus is, God is, the good shepherd. And as we hear in the 23rd Psalm, with our God, our shepherd, our keeper, we will not be in want. God continues to seek us out. God continues to offer us green pastures and still waters. God does revive our souls, soothes our souls when we are troubled. God, the Good Shepherd, is with us, even as we walk through the shadow of death. We are comforted when we are uncomfortable. God sets an abundant table before us. God's abundant love is so big that it just overflows. God promises us that his mercy will follow us all the days of our life and beyond, even to death. 
God's love, God's grace, is bigger than we can imagine. Author Philip Yancey said that grace breaks all the rules. Most people live with a sense of life that's akin to karma. Do good, get rewarded. Do bad, get punished. And along comes this incredible good news that God loves us, not because of who we are, but because of who God is. No matter what we've done, forgiveness is there for the asking. We expect the worst and get the best. That's rather amazing, no? God is the good shepherd. Like the man born blind who was cast out, Jesus will find us when we are cast out. When we least expect it, God will anoint our heads with the oil of healing and forgiveness. God will call us into his fold so that we can know the God of love. The good news is that God seeks to love all of God's good creation. As followers of the God of love, as followers of the Good Shepherd, we are called to remember that God indeed has other sheep that do, not belong, to, that do belong to this fold. We are called to see the others. And yes, that even includes the others that we disagree with as belonging to God's sheepfold. It can be hard when we read the news or observe human behavior to remember that God's love is bigger than we can imagine and that God is calling us all to respond to God's call. And it gets a little messy. I have this little sign in my office that I read a while back, and it says, spoiler alert, ministry is messy. The church isn't perfect. We are all a little crazy. God is really good, and you are ridiculously loved. You all are ridiculously loved by God. And God's love is so big that God ridiculously loves all of God's good creation. I wonder, how can we show our neighborhood that they are ridiculously loved by God? I invite you to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of our Savior, your Son, Jesus, our Defender and Helper, the Holy Spirit and Yahweh, the Creator of all things, we submit our prayers. We pray for the earth, which was placed with us for care. We grieve the stresses we have inflicted on it, on one another, and on the abundance of animals, fish, and birds. We regret the abuse of the resources and the ecology of our home. May, May we, we intervene, intervene against, against those abuses through our acts of justice. We pray for the church, which was established as a model of justice and faith. We grieve the abuse of this power over the ages which have been twisted toward power and greed. We regret this history and pray that our faith leaders may open their hearts to lead with compassion and mercy. We pray for our Episcopal leaders, especially our presiding Bishop Michael, our diocesan Bishop Megan, our parish priest Rick and Anne, and all who minister to the truth. May, May we strengthen our, our faith, faith and follow, follow Jesus', Jesus example, example in caring for the lost and guide those who are searching. We pray for the worldly institutions, governments, powers, and principalities which were instituted to provide safety, stability, and mutual benefit. We grieve the focus away from mutual benefit toward achievement of power and wealth. We regret the suffering caused by wars, dehumanization of others, and malice toward the unempowered. We pray for our world leaders, especially President Joe Biden, Governor Gavin Newsom, and Mayor Daryl Strindberg. May, May we, we see life through the lens of compassion, mercy, and equity. May we speak and act in truth and promote justice for all. We pray for all humanity in the spirit of family. As Jesus described when he instructed, feed the hungry, provided water for the thirsty, welcome the stranger, provide clothing for the naked, care for the sick, and visit the imprisoned. We grieve the neglect for the needy and the divisions imposed on the other. We regret the trauma inflicted on others. May, May we, we overcome, overcome our fears and open our hearts with love, love toward all our human family. family. May, May we, we follow the path laid out for us, for us by Jesus to act, to act justly, justly, practice mercy, and live humbly each day. day. We pray for those known to us suffering from any disease or trouble. We pray especially those we hold silently in our heart or now name. For Albert, Isla, Linda, John, John, Ronald, Pat, Chris, Jackie. As we pray, give, give healing, healing and, and comfort, comfort for those who need. We pray for those known to us who have departed this life. 
We pray especially for those we hold silently in our heart or now name. Phyllis, Eric, Denise. As we pray, embrace, embrace them, them with, with your, your love. love. Give comfort to their families and friends who feel their abundance deeply. O oh God, shepherd of all your people, deliver us from all troubles, worries, and cares that assail us, that we may always do what is pleasing in your sight and remain safe in the care of our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace. Peace to you here in the building. Peace, choir. Peace. And peace to those who are joining us on Facebook Live and YouTube. Are there any birthdays, anniversaries, or special Thanksgivings today? Being none, ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with praise.
Now please join us as we give thanks for the gifts given this week singing. Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our prayers, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this cup. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Paul, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Laureen will be going out this week to see Albert, Isla, and Linda, but today she is at a preaching retreat. So um, she will come on. <laughs> she she will come on Wednesday and and pick up the kits and go at that point. So let us continue with our post communion prayer of thanksgiving. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
Thank you, Justin, the choir, for the beautiful music that enriches our worship. And thank you all for joining us here in the building and those that joined us on Facebook Live and YouTube. I invite you in the building to join us for coffee and goodies in the back of the room. And again, thank you for joining us. Take care of each other. God bless. Ha, ha, ha.